Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Flavor of the Week, brought to you by Cap and Cork Beer, Wine, and Spirits, with 15 locations in Fort Wayne and New Haven. In good spirits, in good company. In Flavor of the Week, Kyle sits down with one of our local priests over four different episodes to sample variations of a favorite food or drink while they discuss the ins and outs of life as a priest. This is Kyle Hyman here for Flavor of the Week, part two with Father Patrick Hake. Thank you for being here, Father. No problem. We are trying some of these hard seltzers. Actually, these are called wine seltzers. The one you, you picked the uh, pineapple passion fruit this time. This is from, how would you say that? Aura? A U R A? Aura. Aura. Okay. So go, go ahead and if you want to crack into that one. I think you gave the natural lime an eight. Yes, I did. All right. You're such a gentleman pouring mine first. This is, all right. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Just the smell of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of that? Wow. Okay. Okay. Less subtle? Less subtle. The smell is much stronger. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that the smell is stronger than the taste. Yeah. How does that work right. out? Maybe it's the bubbles. Maybe. The, I'll have to do more research into uh, into seltzer waters. Research is something that I think I associate with you. Hmm. Do you find yourself to be, step one, a curious person? I hope so, yeah. And then step two, do you feel like you have to follow that curiosity path to its conclusion? Don't we all have to do that? No. I think there are some people that are just like, huh, I wonder how cars work. Oh, well, that's something I will never understand. And they're content with that. But you get a book about cars. Yes, from the library once. And read the book. Okay, here, I'm, I'm going to pull this up because I was looking through. I, oh, that's not the one. That's a different one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my next book on my reading list, How Cars Work, with a, with a nice big picture of a, a spark plug there. So what made you want to read a book on how cars work? Well, first, my dad is a used car salesman. He's a lot up in Huntertown, Indiana uh -huh. to make automotives. If you want a deal, go talk to him. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And what I was, was I was thinking about when I'm a priest, like, am I going to have any hobbies? Uh huh. I want hobbies. Right. So what about fixing up cars? That sounds like fun. Okay. I figured, actually, I don't know anything about cars. So let's figure out how cars work. Now, does your dad fix up cars? He does, yeah. part of the yeah, yeah, dealership? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He never passed this on to you? He never did. I guess never. I was too busy. I don't know. Okay. I'll have to ask him. Okay. So then you say, I'm going to get a book called How Cars Work. Yes. And how did you find the book? Did you? Cars are really cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a lot of awesome parts. There's a lot of awesome parts. Here's, so here's my favorite thing about this post is the follow-up. You said, I enjoyed reading it. It's pretty basic, but it gave me an overarching idea of what car parts do and what they generally work with. What I did after I read the book was write down the name of every part that I didn't fully understand. And now I'm going on YouTube to get a fuller understanding of the different parts. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what I love about you. So you are curious to learn about cars. And so you're not just satisfied with like, I don't understand how cars work. You think I am going to find out. And we live in an age where we can learn anything now. You know, you can find tutorials on anything. So then you read the book. And then every part that you didn't fully understand, then you went and watched a YouTube video to explain it in yeah. more detail? Yeah. What was a part that you didn't understand? Um, uh, for example. I probably remember the name of it. Like this the, was two years ago, This was two years way. ago, yeah. Yeah. Like the OCAM thing. It's something that spins. Uh-huh. And I should probably restart this stuff again. <laughs> so did you do anything with this knowledge then? Did, have you tried working on a vehicle? Um, so my car started breaking down and uh -huh. I knew what the part was when I was talking with the mechanic. Okay. So that felt pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to be like, I don't know. It goes kakung, kakung, kakung. Yeah. Say, yeah. It's this part. Yeah. But you're not like all of a sudden in the shop all day. Not yet. Working on. Not yet. Once I'm a pastor, I have my own garage. I'll maybe, maybe put up an old car in there and try and fix it. What would be the dream car? Okay. I'm going to say a Ford Focus because that was my car when I was in high school. <laughs> okay. A nice little Ford Focus. Seems like something that reasonably you yeah. can come by. Yeah. An another book around this same area you read was next on your reading list. You said, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing. 
Yes. How'd that go? I threw away a lot of stuff in my room. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a really good book. Were you wanting to declutter or you just I was heard work- about the craze of the book and were curious? I was working on ways to improve myself. And uh-huh. one of my problems is I'm not very clean. Okay. You know? Uh-huh. So I said, well, let's read a book about how to become more clean, more tidy. So that was two years ago. Have you stuck with it or did you return to your former ways? It's a constant battle in battle my life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Is it just that you don't want to get rid of things? Like you just want to hang on to things? No, it's not even that. It's just I've laid things down and I forget about it. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> I figure it's going to get messy tomorrow. Why even bother cleaning up? I'm the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why make my bed if nobody's going to see it between now and the next time I get in it? That's what I'm wondering too. Right. Do you make your bed? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> so, been a priest for... A little over a year now. A year you're, and two months. You're already on your second assignment. Yes. How has that transition gone? So it's always hard to say goodbye to an old parish, you know, mm-hmm. just because like your family there, your friends there, it's hard to leave. So, but it's about this new place, St. John on Fairfield. Yeah. I was at St. Vincent's Elkhart uh-huh. past year. Yep. And it's a good, good place I'm at. Like the neighborhood around St. John's is awesome. It's next to Foster Park and there's like all these like young families there. And people like walk out about and like say hi to their neighbors it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, with, I'm now with Father Andrew Bozinski, and he likes to cook, so it's a good perk there. Yeah. So what does he make? What kind of so highlights so far? He likes barbecue. Uh-huh. He loves barbecue. He doesn't like it. He loves it. And he's making good barbecue. Do you cook? I make eggs and rice. One of the things you said about your departure from Elkhart. Oh, wow. We're going way back on Facebook. <laughs> Oh, this was, yeah, this was This was even, when I was at St. Thomas. This was a summer assignment. Yeah. This wasn't, yeah, I, I misread this. End of a great summer in Elkhart. I certainly left a mark at St. Thomas, and I'll be taking a lot away. <laughs> <laughs> By which I mean I hit the garage and took some unexpected paint on my car. <laughs> yeah. How, how'd that go? Well, you know, I was coming in back to the rectory after going going to see Ant-Man with Mike Rodzinski. Uh-huh. So, yeah. And, and there was a cop car that was parked in the church parking lot, has cop cars are out to do. But he was parked in my normal turn route. Mm-hmm. So I had to mess up my turn route going in, and I was unprepared. And the back rear passenger of my, of my car hit the garage, and that was a big dent there. Okay. It's still there today? It's still there today. You haven't? It's a badge of honor. You didn't uh, watch a YouTube video on pounding out dents? and No, I'm just, no. <laughs> I like it. It gives my car personality. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. Like a scar. Like you a scar, yeah. Gives you something to tell. Yeah. Sorry. Sure, sure. So what else has been maybe any surprises uh, since becoming a priest? Something that uh, you were, is more difficult than you were anticipating? Something that's easier than you anticipated? Something that you're doing more than you thought? Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize how often I was going to be doing nursing home visits or, or whatever. Yeah. So I would say the difficulty... Just being a person, you know, having to go into people's difficult pers- lives and like not knowing how to solve their problems because mm-hmm. you really, you can't just solve their problems. Yeah. Some comes to you and they say like, hey, my marriage is a wreck. Like, yeah, that's not like a problem. <laughs> Do they think that you can fix it for them? Sometimes, yeah. 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 So that's hard, like facing my own like inability to solve problems instantly. Yeah. Like I'm not Jesus. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And it's just very humbling just when people come to you with their problems. Uh-huh. You know, when, when people look at you and they do see Jesus and you're like, mm, shoot. Right. Yeah. So what is your response? If somebody says, hey, I am struggling with this. And you're like, well, there's actually nothing that I can do. <laughs> like, I'm not a therapist. You know, well, I, I don't I, say that. <laughs> but what, what is your response? Like, how, how do you respond to that situation? So my normal response is just to listen. Yeah. Because oftentimes that's, a, that's what people are looking for. Just someone to listen to them. Yeah. You know, I listen to them and then I just get, and I just like say like, this is what I think. Mm-hmm. Are they looking for prayers? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. They're all, 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 all looking for prayers and mm-hmm. someone just like to talk to. Because so often people are like isolated in their own worlds. Yeah. You know, they're isolated in their own family. Like everyone around them knows the marriage. They can't talk to anyone around them. Right. So the priest is a, a safe person to talk to. Does it ever lead into confession? I can't say that, can I? I mean, you're not saying particular names. Okay, yeah. But... <laughs> Somebody struggling with you start talking to me like, oh, you know what? Actually, this would be a great opportunity for you to go to confession. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that, uh, in addition to your work at now at St. John the Baptist in Fort Wayne, uh, you're also a chaplain at high school. I help out there. I'm not. I'm not the chaplain. Okay. Just uh, I get to show up for confessions, out. and I don't. I don't have to worry about any other problems. Oh, nice. Best of both worlds. Nice. How often are you outside of the church doing confessions? So I go to St. Lure, Bishop Lure's every Wednesday mm-hmm. from 1030 to noon for confessions during the, during the lunch hours. Uh huh. Yeah. And then are you also doing the like uh, during Lent, if they have like penance services at different churches and stuff, do you yeah. get kind of pulled in all these different no, yeah, yeah. retreats and things like that? Yeah. I'll be wherever I'm asked to help out. Uh huh. You know, I've not been here yet for Advent, so I don't know who's going to ask me to do things. But when you're up in Elkhart. Yeah, I'd go over to like Queen of Angel when I was in Elkhart for confessions and down in St. Thomas. Uh-huh. How many churches in the diocese do you think you've been to? <sighs> okay, let's think. <laughs> like as a priest or in general? No, just that you've actually been inside the churches. I'll say like. That, that would be an interesting, you know how they have those maps and you can shade in the, the number of states that you've been to? Yeah. You know? How many states have you been to? How many churches in the diocese have you been in? That'd be a fun thing to, yeah. for us to all do. Make the map. Make the map. Yeah. That's, now, you're, now that's my job? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I don't think I've been in, I mean, I feel I like I've been in like a lot. 40? 40? I mean, I mean, 40 seems like a lot. Yeah. There's like 80 parishes. Yeah. There's like 30 in Fort Wayne. I don't know if they're in Fort Wayne. It's a lot of it's a lot in Fort Wayne. <laughs> just make up a number. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. <laughs> and then the schools. Have you been to all four of the high schools? I've been to all four of the high schools. Mm-hmm. I go there when I was a seminarian for visits to talk to the kids about you know vocations. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we've got more to talk about and more of these carbonated. What are, what are we calling it? Like seltzer, hard seltzer wine waters. Seltzers. Yeah. What, what do you think so far of this one here? The pineapple passion fruit. So the the, sm- the smells the smells good, but the taste isn't as good. Okay. So we'll, we'll give it a six. Okay. Yeah. Still going with the natural lime as as. Oh yeah, natural lime so far has been now. Superior. I will say you were wanting to save the the which one was it? Peach nectarine. Peach, peach nectarine. We're going to save that for last because you're anticipating that's one of your favorite flavors. Yeah, I peach. love peach. So we'll we'll see where this goes. Yeah on a future episode of Flavor of the Week with Father Patrick Hake, brought to you in part by Captain Cork.